Welcome to the Cappiello and Collins Show on YouTube with David Cappiello and Michael Collins. The show where the right wing never gets the pass and the right wing is always wrong. Good evening. Welcome to the Capiello Collins Show, episode number two. Today is September 16, 2008, and we are edging ever closer, and I believe, in fact, it's six months from this very day, which will be the last day of analog telecasting and a switch to all digital television broadcasting. Now, for people who have cable and satellite, that won't mean so much because the cable and satellite systems will, uh, they will um, be converting the signal so that your TV set will be able to receive them, even if it's an analog only television set. But if you are using rabbit ears or you are using an outdoor aerial to receive your signals directly off the air, then you will have to uh, make adjustments. Uh, first of all, you must have a digital television set or you can have an analog set, but it needs a digital converter. Now the government is uh, handing out $40 coupons um, for every citizen of this nation. You'll need only to mail in for one. Now another problem with all of this is that uh, digital broadcasting has different characteristics than analog broadcasting. Um, it does mean a much, much clearer picture so that you'll be able to see the tiniest detail on your television screen. But at the same time, reception is more difficult. Now, earlier this month, a test began in the uh, North Carolina coastal city of Wilmington, Wilmington, North Carolina. And already viewers uh, are reporting that uh, they are unable to receive the digital signal, especially if they are not in Wilmington, if they're further away. And now the FCC chairman, Kevin Martin, is saying that uh, uh, viewers of uh, many stations and many stations across the country will um, experience smaller coverage areas for their signals. Now this is a, a particular problem because it deprives people who uh, do not have the money for uh, cable and uh, satellite bills every month to, uh, to pay the, those bills to be able to receive television uh, stations. And again, the airwaves belong to the public and stations are licensed to serve the public interest, convenience, and necessity. Most people in this country depend on television for their news coverage. They depend on it to follow the presidential campaign, for example, and also state level campaigns, and in bigger cities, mayoral campaigns, and also county governments in some areas. This test is going on in Wilmington, and I had uh, felt that that was not the best place for this test to take place because Wilmington, North Carolina, and Coastal Car uh, Carolina are pretty much flat as a pancake. And the real problems with digital, there are already problems reported in this area, which is a flat area, no, no mountains in, the, in, in that region. But in mountainous areas, there's going to be major problems. Uh, analog TV signals are, in some cases, able to defy mountains and hills and, and make it to the other side of them. Uh, so that viewers can at least receive a, a snowy picture or maybe even a pretty good picture depending on their antenna and, and specific area. With digital TV, the signal either comes in very clearly or it just is not dead and there's nothing. Your, your TV set will just go to a blue screen and you won't see anything. And these signals are not going to be able to get over hilltops and mountains the way analog signals have been able to get over them. So. For most of the country, I think um, we don't know what's going to happen until the actual conversion takes place February 17. And many people are predicting a train wreck. Now, this is yet another um, 
situation where government is uh, people are le uh, relying on the government to help them through to shepherd them through a situation and government is uh, is is letting them down so we will just have to wait until February to see what happens um, and then as usual the government uh, will be responding the government should be conducting tests now in mountainous areas and Connecticut Connecticut itself uh, where we're originating from is a mountainous area. It, anyone who has uh, gone up uh, Route 8 knows that uh, the coastline of Connecticut is, is flat. For example, Stratford, where Route 8 originates. But then by the time you get up to uh, even five or seven miles up into Shelton and, and then Derby and Ansonia, the terrain becomes very rugged. And uh, you can tell from your FM reception. If you have an FM uh, radio in your automobile, you hear the so-called picket fencing uh, phenomenon. You know, you've often heard of an FM uh, signal. You have it tuned in and it goes... Tch, tch, tch. Well, that's because of the, 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 the effect of the mountainous terrain blocking out the signal and also the shadowing that occurs. Everyone has seen ghosts on TV. Now, all of these problems uh, will be experienced to an even greater degree on digital television. So, while in the short run, it will be um, uh, in some ways a benefit with much clearer pictures and certainly the quality of pictures and for people with cable and satellite that will not be a problem uh, and they're in, a, they're in a position to pay these ever more expensive cable bills I believe in the last 10 years cable bills on the average have doubled in, the, in this nation um, people who are relying on their antennas and on rabbit ears will be in trouble Now, wrapping up, this uh, issue is important for our freedoms because people today rely so heavily on television for news, for information, for political coverage, for even alerts about the, everything from contaminated foods to uh, uh, weather emergencies. The people who are being most affected in many cases are those without economic means. Most of the people who will be affected will be people in inner cities, uh, minority people, elderly people who, who uh, in, in many cases can't afford the, uh, the steep bills from cable and satellite companies uh, because they're further away from the transmitters of, of, of these stations and uh, further away from the city center where you have strong signals. And uh, they also will be left without uh, uh, coverage from these stations and left without an ability to receive these broadcasts in New York City about. for example it was revealed um, earlier this decade in, in the tragedy of the uh, World Trade Center attack that as many as one-third of the c residents of the city did not have cable television and what that meant was that uh, when those antennas uh, when the big TV antenna on top of the World Trade Center building came down those people were left without reception. And interestingly, uh, the station that had the greatest impact was uh, Channel 13, WNET, the PBS station. Um, more of their, a uh, higher percentage of their viewers, a uh, higher share of their viewers received, received their signal uh, over the air without cable than any other of the New York City TV stations. But uh, again, millions of residents in the city were affected by that. More than two million, as, as, um, as, it, as was reported at the time. So we're not talking about a small number of people here. We're talking about millions and millions of citizens across the We're going to have to wait until February 17, 2009, which is six months from tomorrow, to find out the full impact of this transition to digital-only television. This concludes this episode of the Capiello and Collins Show. See you next time.